there is, of course, that optimism about the budget deficit. And my next guest also expects some resolution to that debt ceiling debate as well. Ben Pedley is head of investment strategy for North Asia at HSBC Private Bank. Now, Ben, why do you think this? Well, I think what we're seeing at the moment, Rish, is uh, brinkmanship uh, on both sides of the aisle. And I think uh, overnight, uh, the, uh, the decision by Obama to support this group of six bipartisan uh, committee's proposal, uh, I think, is a move in the right direction. I think that the alternative, which is a selective default, which would see the U.S. Uh, downgraded by various degrees... Oh, that would be financial suicide, wouldn't it, really, Ben? Well, I, think, like the... well I think it would be. And I don't think any school teacher in the Midwest is going to thank either their Republican or their Democrat representative uh, for ensuring that they don't have a paycheck and probably their long-term mortgage rates would go up substantially. So I think it's just pragmatism at work, finally. So that's one thing which is positive in terms of the background noise. But when we look at Europe, the uh, background noise there then suddenly also becomes louder when we have the IMF saying that uh, even if Greece doesn't default, the whole region's in a mess anyway, possibly. Well, I think we know the whole region's in a mess. And I think that, once again, there With is... With exceptions, of course, Germany well, and France. Uh, and, of yes. course. But I think there is a significant political component to what's going on in Europe as well. And Angela Merkel's obviously positioning herself uh, to try and ensure that she doesn't receive voter backlash uh, for any decision to effectively bail out some of these peripheral nations. This issue is not going to be resolved anytime soon. Any solution will be a band-aid solution, but at least a reduction in the noise about these EMU peripheral nation problems from a debt perspective will be good news. So some of the good news for these markets is a reduction of the bad news. And I think it's been a bit of an overhang on equity markets, hence the risk on, risk off that we've seen for the last couple of months. Well, we've seen this volatility, haven't we, Ben? And if we look at uh, what's been happening, well, today we're getting a bounce up, but, uh, you know, we're not really moving anywhere in any clear direction yet. No, that's true. And, uh, you know, we're expecting a breakout to the top side uh, probably in the last third or a little bit more of the year. I think the other factor that's really been concerning uh, investors, Rish, is the situation in China with inflation. Now, I think that um, for Asian-based investors and also for investors in Asia geographically, I think uh, a pullback, uh, a dissipate, uh, inflation pressures lessening in China uh, would arguably be even more significant perhaps than what's going on in Europe. And I see concrete signs that there will be, uh, that we are topping out in terms of inflation in China. And if that's the case, and you make some historical comparisons, we could see significant upside, not only through the end of the year for H and A shares, but also for the next year or more. Uh, ben, I've got to say this is a long time coming, though, because, I mean, when I mean, we talked to you in April, you were saying then that uh, Chinese stocks were a buy. Now, we haven't done much. In fact, if we have a look, the, since April the 15th, the Shanghai Composite is down by 8% here. Now, you continue your bullish stance. I mean, here, despite... Uh, well, you know, I suppose I'm more bullish now than I was back in April. But what I would say, Rish, is we were saying to people back then that you, you, know, you wanted to buy into this weakness, and I think now we're saying buy at market. And I think the reason there is that um, the main driver behind the 6.4% reading on the CPI was a 57% rise on year in pork prices and a 24% rise on year in egg prices. So bacon, eggs. Yeah. bacon and eggs basically costing the, uh, the Chinese uh, consumer a lot more. Um, the base effect's going to be very uh, positive. I think we're going to get no more interest rate hikes, but potentially two more reserve ratio requirement hikes. It's going to bring inflation under control. Just, I know you had a lot of numbers, Rish, but yes. 2004, inflation peaked in China at 5.3%. It pulled back over the next two years to 1%, and by the time it went back up through 5.3%, in the middle of 2007, eight shares were up 243%. I'm not saying it's going to happen the same way this time round, but if you can buy stocks at the peak of inflation, you do fare very well in China.